name is Isabel Martinez, and today I will be talking to you guys about paralanguage and voice. So, definition of paralanguage. Paralanguage is vocal features that accompany speech and contribute to communication that are not generally considered part of the language system, such as vocal quality, loudness, tempo, and sometimes including facial expressions and gestures. What I didn't mention um, was also paralanguage is body language. Oh, by the way, before I forget, that definition came from dictionary.com if anybody wants to go and look at it. Okay, so paralanguage and voice is from the words not spoken, but rather of how it's spoken. David Abercrombie, a Scottish academic, said, while we speak with our vocal organs, we converse with our entire bodies. Look it up on bizme.com slash blog. Well, paralanguage has to do a lot with facial expression, one, eye contact, see, spatial distance or silence, pitch and tone of variations, posture, gestures, and also the granddaddy of them all, sarcasm. Okay, I'll give you an example for ex of facial expressions. Okay, so let's pretend we just got some good news. Somebody tells me, I just found I was pregnant. Did you get it? I was excited, right? I didn't have to tell you I was excited, but I was excited because my face showed it, right? Eye contact. So for example, let's pretend we're at dinner, right? We're having family dinner and somebody nudges you on the side and eye contact would be. Very subtle, but that still conveys a nonverbal communication through eye contact. Okay, so silence. Let's pretend we just got into an argument with one of our siblings and they come over and they tell you, can we talk? But your response is something similar to mine. Now you guys tell me if this is either a positive response for my part or a negative response for my part. Keep an eye out. Hey, can we talk? A little tricky, right? Yeah, never said that nonverbal communication can be interpreted correctly. In fact, half of the time it can actually be interpreted incorrectly. The next one is pitch and tone, like this. I'm fine. <laughs> really? Absolutely. I'm fine. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> I don't know why it's coming out all loud and squeaky, because really, I'm fine. <laughs> Do you guys think he was totally fine? According to his word spoken, he was fine, but we can tell he wasn't because of his high pitched, right? Nonverbal communication can also be changed through differences in our postures. For example, maybe you're chatting with a friend and the friend's posture is a little bit like this. What sort of communication is it giving you? That's very simple. But as you can see, two different postures from this to this convey a totally different message from the other end or perceive a different environment. And as mentioned, the granddaddy of them all, sarcasm. Check these out. At first, sarcasm maybe doesn't seem like such a big deal, but let me read these to you. A 99% angel that, oh, that 1%. Hmm. What kind of message is that persuading, right? I don't even really have to say anything that the sarcasm in there is telling us a lot. Some of them can even be kind of bad. For example, this one. I told my wife she can embrace her mistakes. She hugged me. Can you blame her? <laughs> a little rough on the edges, but there you go. Something that I found very interesting was that sarcasm is literally the act of saying opposite of what you mean. So sarcasm tends to be used with a monotone, deep and serious tone of voice, thus conveying seriousness to the message. For example, this one. If you're too open-minded, your brains will fall out. 
Now, can our brains literally fall out? No, right? But it's trying to emphasize the message of it. By the way, before it goes over my head, just as sarcasm does, this was quoted from psychcentral.com. Something that I found very interesting was from the Vizna.com blog, which states, when people speak to us, we absorb 7% of the words used, 55% from body gestures and postures, and 38% from tones and inflections of the word they present. So a lot of the times, the words that we're saying aren't even really conveying our message, rather how we're saying it, how we're presenting them, and how we're presenting ourselves. So it has to do a lot with the how. And the baby bonus article is a pleasant tone of voice and relaxed body posture, and this helps your child to see you as an open and ready to listen person. Babybonus.msf.gov. So whether it's through our facial expressions or body language or even vocal tone, nonverbal paralanguage communication plays a bigger part than the verbal, conscientious words that we use when communicating. Even pause, something as simple as pause um, in conveying a message, convey something of a message. I want to leave you guys off with this very important quote that I thought, wow, this goes a lot with nonverbal communication, especially when it comes to paralanguage of voice. So check it out.